God speaks that way. And the New Testament interprets the Old Testament a lot that way. But, of course, what that means is, is that the way that God speaks through Paul on Genesis isn't necessarily the way that Genesis originally uh, spoke. And it may not be the way that Matthew speaks uh, through, through Genesis. Um, and all this works, I think, because God uh, isn't worried about whether or not uh, people have taken IBS or not. But um, um, you have to make your, your mind on those kinds of things. Or on that on Tuesday, maybe. Uh, for this reason, a wife ought to have authority on her head because of the angels. This is one of those, what? Uh, where, where did that come from, uh, verses? Um, uh, you know my interpretation of part of this, at least. That authority here refers to the veil. Um, she has The veil is a sign of her respectability, her chasteness, her honorableness. Um, um, uh, because the angels is a bit of a, a question. Um, some early Christians, of course, thought... Oh, actually, some early Christians actually... Man, talk about manuscripts. There are some early Christians who quote this verse with, instead of having authority on their head, they quote it as, a woman should have a veil on her head. Um, so, so the textual committee sat down and said, okay, we've got a few church fathers that quote this as, put a veil on your head, and we have the majority of manuscripts, including the older ones and the good ones that we like, um, uh, say authority, which do we go with? And um, the committee uh, decided that authority is by far and large, by, by and large the most likely way this original text uh, read. Anyway, um, actually, early Christians, uh, uh, like Tertullian, took this, he actually wrote a whole essay on the veiling of women. Uh, but Tertullian thought that this was about bad angels. Uh, we believe in fallen angels as well as good angels. And uh, Paul actually says in 1 Corinthians 6, do you not know that we will judge angels? And so some have suggested that the angels he has in mind here are the angels. Put a veil on your head. You might tempt some angels. Uh, like Genesis 6, where the sons of God went into the daughters of men. And so put a veil on your head so the angels don't get tempted. Um, uh, I don't personally take that uh, particular uh, interpretation. Uh, but uh, I understand the argument. Um, uh, Blomberg goes with those who see the angels here as kind of like policemen with machine guns at the door um, for proper worship. Um, Qumran, uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls kind of view, view it this way, uh, that, that uh, basically uh, the angels are with you when you're worshiping, and so you better put on your Sunday best or else they'll shoot you. I mean, they don't say they'll shoot you. But, uh, but there's some sense, you know, remember the angels are watching, so you need to wear your helmet. Um, I, I think it's uh, because angels are putatively male. Um, God is putatively male. Angels are putatively male. And so the woman has the, the, um, the, the sign of respectability on her head in the presence of angels and God and, and other men uh, to show that she is in fact a, a respectable uh, a woman. Um, well, I don't know what you think. Uh, but uh, it's a hard passage. There's lots of or lots of literature on it, you know, with a bunch of pinheads like me trying to keep a job by uh, writing articles. Okay, um, so I need to, to finish up here. However, neither is the wife without the husband, nor is the husband without the wife in the Lord. For just as the wife came from the husband, so also the man comes through a woman, and all things are from God. Now there he balances out the force um, uh, to show that, that, that um, okay, you guys have a problem at Corinth, and so I'm going to play the, let's see, which card shall I play to get you to do what you need to do? Okay, I'm going to play the husband's head of the wife uh, card. But uh, I don't want you to forget the more basic principle uh, that in Christ there is neither male nor female. Um, balancing out the exhortation. Um, okay, discern among yourselves. Is it appropriate for a wife to pray to God uncovered? I mean, are you going to go into the church naked and pray? No, I mean, put some clothes on. Um, uh, God's watching. Um, does not nature herself teach you that if a man wears long hair, it's a dishonor to him, but if a wife has long hair, it's a glory to her, uh, because it has been given to her as a cover. Um, now, I'm not sure that, and Blomberg agrees, nature, I'm not sure that nature teaches you uh, that, that uh, it's a dishonor for a man to have long hair. But certainly, at the culture, in the culture at that day, uh, uh, Paul believed that uh, that was the way it would be experienced. Um, and that's a thorny issue I just uh, um, 
uh, throughout there. And um, because it's 20 after, I'm stopping. Um, um, and if someone, I can, I can get the last verse in here. If anybody seems to be argumentative, we do not have such practice, not even the Assemblies of God Church, I mean the Assemblies of God. Um, uh, now there's two interpretations of this. We do not have such a practice, mean, namely, there's no established rule on head covering, so if you disagree with me, don't worry about it. I don't at all think that's the likely meaning here. I think that what Paul is saying is, if anybody's argumentative about this, we don't argue with apostles. Okay? Do it. Um, now, uh, you may not agree with that, but that's, uh, that's my thought on that. Well, okay, so this concludes uh, 1 Corinthians 11. Any questions on 1 Corinthians